Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining to today's webinar on Dash 2.0. We've accomplished quite a bit of things with Dash in the recent years, and we are pretty excited to share some of the new features and some of the ones which actually have been introduced in 1.9, but we thought it's, it's a good idea to have them mentioned at least a little bit in this webinar as well. So for those of you that haven't used Dash previously, Dash ultimately is a block. It's a versatile block which you can use to add content of all kinds into your Moodle site. You can use both static content as well as dynamic content. And what this means is best visible if I show you our demo site and then you'll recognize what I mean by that. So let me share my screen. So if you look at this site, and uh, I hope that most of you have been on this site before, then you'll notice that we've got a big header section here on the top, which has a slider with our featured courses. Below that, you've got a, a section which has some text and an image, and this continues all the way down to the end of the page. So we, we have a combination of static content and mixed content that's all built using Dash. When I log into the platform, and turn on editing mode, you see what's actually going on here. So you can see that, for example, this here, this is one dash block, this here, where I've added some text and a background color, a text color for it. And on the other side, I've added an image. And that is a very simple way to use Dash to create some nice looking content. Then on the next section here, I've used the same thing, but in this case, I haven't used the two thirds, one third layout. I've used the one thirds, two thirds layout. And in addition, I added a little background color. So this here is using a linear gradient so that we have this light gray background and we don't show any border. We don't show any header or something like that. We just show the raw content. And um, that's ultimately how you add content to any page with Dash. If you're interested in learning more about how to use Dash specifically and how to use the different widgets, layouts, data source, and all these kinds of things, we'll have an additional webinar coming up, which is more targeted as a training and how to use Dash, like a tutorial, whereas this really only um, explains the new features of Dash. So um, I hope that this like little nutshell introduction to what Dash is helps you a little bit to understand what's coming up next if you haven't used Dash before. Uh, but if you um, if you need some additional help, um, then of course just uh, watch out for the next webinar, which we're going to announce soon. Without further ado, uh, let's jump into today's agenda. We will cover quite a bit. Um, we're covering the new widgets that we have. We're covering the latest data sources, the latest improvements to dashboards, and the latest addition to the Dash family, which is called Developer. And that didn't really fit into the tile, so I just shortened it to Dev. I, I hope that's appropriate. On this course, uh, which I will share in the main demo side later on, so you will be able to play with it and, and check it out yourself. Um, I've added like one activity to each of the section for each feature that I want to discuss and hopefully that gives us a, a nice kind of um, logical consequence and we can have an easy way to, to walk through that. So um, I'm currently looking at this from, from a teacher point of view, so let's quickly create a brand new user. Or, oh, actually I've already gotten one, so let's, let's use this one here, our demo webinar participant. Not sure if that's actually a word in English, but anyway. Um, and this is now starting fresh. So you see we're at 0%. And now let's dive into it. So first of all, um, we've got our widgets, which have received some significant addition uh, from the past releases. Um, widgets are, for those that are not familiar with the term, are ready-made layouts. They combine a set of data, a set of content that you want to display, can be dynamic and can be static, and also the layout. So it's like, like you just say, I want to have the My Profile widget, and then you have a couple of configuration options and you can use it. So um, if I have a look at the My Profile widget, then you'll see uh, that um, I've got a couple of examples here um, for the widget. Um, the widget in this variant here is showing the user's image, which 
there's none, so it's a bit boring, but you get the idea. And a couple of KPIs, which might or might not be interesting to your site. So I can use the My Profile widget, like as it's, as it's um, named, uh, to showcase important information to your students, as well as profile information to make the site look more personal and to give users the chance to feel identified on the platform, if that makes sense. And uh, this is all very customizable. So you don't really have to use it like this. You can have it in different ways. And to show that, I've created different variants of the same block. So you see this here is using the user and a couple of KPIs, whereas this variant is using just the user's profile image and a title and the user's full name, whereas this variant is showing um, a couple of KPIs related to courses. Overall, we've got a couple of KPIs already built. We'll, we're going to add more. I think we've got something like 12 at the moment. And uh, these are all related around courses, course completion, the recent logins that you did, um, your login strike, um, the skill points that you earned um, in, in this week and in total. So it, it's really nice to, to give this platform a, a look and feel and some kind of a meta level that is above the usual course completions. If I quickly jump to um, this page here, to our main demo page, you'll see that this is exactly what I've done here. So here, this is my user profile image. You can compare that to here. And I have my name and I have um, a message icon so I can not, uh, I can uh, contact me. And um, I've got different KPIs here. So in this case, for, for example, I'm showcasing how many courses I've completed, how many points I've earned, uh, that I'm on a three-day strike. And on this side, it's configured to only become a real strike at five, so it's not colored will look nicer if you have a proper strike. And you'll see how many activities I've completed, how many activities are due, and how many people are in my uh, team. And this can then be completely customized. So in order to make this a little more interesting, um, let's have a look at the customization options here. So as I mentioned, you can define whether you want to show the profile image or not, whether you want to show the user's full name or not, and which specific user profile information you want to show. So in my case, I've selected the country, but I could instead choose the city and maybe the email address. And instead of the message, maybe I'm, I'm showing, I don't know, something like my username. And if I do that, then this information will change. And similarly, if I want to have different KPIs, then I can just change these. So um, for example, I can switch this to logins this week, and then this will change. And the layout of this will automatically adapt to the number of KPIs that you've added. So no matter if it's five, four, three, or, or six, that's a total, it will look nice every time. That's all I had to say about the My Profile widget. Check it out on our page and, and play with it. Or if you've already got Dash 2.0, then I hope that you can make some use of it on your own site.